Hey guys, Josh here, and today I would like to discuss my first impressions of an upcoming farming game called Immortal Life. Developed by Ifang Studio and published by 2P Games, Immortal Life is a Chinese-themed farming game that released in early access on April 28, 2022. I got a review key so I was able to play a bit earlier, and in this video I will walk you through my experience so far, share the thoughts I had in my first few hours of playing this game, tell you what I like and dislike about it, and keep in mind this is not a full review, just my first impressions but hopefully it will help you decide whether or not you want to buy this game. Don't forget that this game is in early access, so some features may be missing, incomplete, or there may still be some bugs. I'll be putting a link to the Steam page in the description, and the devs have already released a few updates and a roadmap for May and June, which addresses a few of my concerns in this video. So let's jump into the game. So the first thing you do when starting a new save file is picking between the male and female protagonist. So there's no character customization so far, but I think there might be at some point since screenshots of the game on Steam look like they're showing different characters. But for now, you can only pick between these two preset characters. And we also get the first signs that the localization needs a bit more work because the protagonist settings text doesn't fit in the box, which was most likely designed to fit a few Chinese characters. It's just a small detail, but you'll see that this is something that comes up a lot in this video. So you then pick your last and first name, and I didn't want to put my full name, so I just went for Josh B. And once again, another little localization mishap. The game never puts any space between the last and the first name, so everyone just calls me Josh or sometimes just B. So I hope this is something they can adjust uh, for the English version of the game. Then there's a little introduction. You're being invited to join a sect called the Guiyun sect. So you head to the Misty Valley where people are going to pass the admission exam to the sect. But since you're apparently special and you were invited by the elder, you don't need to pass the exam. So everybody else is getting ready to pass the exam. And then there's suddenly some kind of meteor shower that hits the village and most of the buildings collapse, there is fire everywhere, and we decide to join forces with the others to rebuild the village and the sect. Overall, the dialogue and translation so far is not too bad, the story is pretty interesting, some sentences don't sound very natural, there are a few mistakes, you can tell it needs some work, but at least the message gets across pretty well, and I'm hopeful this will be fleshed out by the time the game fully releases. The game is not fully voiced, but there is a few Chinese voiceover here and there, and the game focuses quite a lot on the story, especially in the first hour or so where it's pretty much just dialogue after dialogue. And honestly, I think it's nice to see farming games that concentrate a little bit more on the story. So far, it is keeping me interested, even if the translation could be better. I have to give it points for doing a story that's more original than just taking over Grandpa's farm or something like that. And if you're not a story person, don't worry, once you're done with the introduction, you'll have a bit more freedom, and the cutscenes, while still there, will be less frequent. I also really appreciate the portraits that most of the important characters have when you talk with them. They don't change with their emotions, so as of now, there's only one portrait per character, but they're really well drawn, everybody's super attractive, and it makes it also a bit easier to get attached to them. I feel like the different character models look pretty similar, so I really rely on the portraits mostly to remember who is who. There's also a relationship system in this game, even though it's not fully implemented as of now, and every time you talk with someone, give them something, or complete a request for them, you'll get some friendship points. It also looks like there will be some character-specific event later on that will allow you to learn more about someone's background, but I have to say that I like the emphasis on relationship that this game seems to push along the story, and I'm just hoping characters will become a bit more fleshed out or unique as we get to know them, because for now I find it a bit difficult to differentiate them as they all seem to have pretty generic personalities, but maybe it's just because we're not friends yet, so I'm looking forward to playing more and seeing how the relationships will evolve. And not only are the character portraits beautiful in Immortal Life, the whole game looks beautiful in my opinion. It's by no means a AAA game, but you can tell they put a lot of effort and I also found the environments to look so good. The terrain looks like some sort of watercolor painting, which gives the game a very unique style. And then your farm, the town, and all of the buildings are all filled with little details. The environments are never empty and everything just feels very alive and just pleasant to look at. One thing that does look a bit more rough, however, is the UI. The colors and general design is fine. I think it matches well with the ancient China theme the game is going for. However, some things could be improved. 
For example, on the map, a lot of the text overlaps with each other, which makes it extremely hard to read characters' names when they're clustered all in the same area. And once again, this is not much of a problem in the original Chinese version, where names don't have as many characters, and I also noticed that the font is a lot clearer to read in the Chinese version. I found that in the English version, the text is just so hard to read because it's generally really small, and there's not too much of an outline on the font that they're using, so sometimes it's just like white on top of another very light color. And for some reason, sometimes the font size just varies. So some things are gonna be really small, some things are gonna be a little bit bigger, and it lacks consistency and just looks a little bit messy and difficult to read. It's the same thing with the dialogue, the font size just varies from one dialogue to the next, and this only happens with the translated text, and I say this because some of the dialogue has not been translated yet. When it's in Chinese, it all looks clean and it's all consistent, the same size, but the font gets a lot messier when it's in English. But we're still just at the beginning of the early access, so I won't be too harsh on this, and I hope these little things will be worked out later on. The controls can also feel a bit unnatural. For example, to move an item from your inventory to a chest, you would expect shift click to transfer items because that's how it works in most games, but instead you need to click once, and then press spacebar, so it works, but it's just not conventional, not what most players are used to. I don't know if the conventions for that kind of thing is maybe different in Chinese games, but it just doesn't feel very natural here. Sometimes also you'll want to pick up an item on the ground, but because you have a tool in your hands, it won't work, and you'll have to unequip your tool first before you can pick up the item, so once again, it works, but players usually expect to be able to pick up items without having to unequip their tool or weapon first, Another thing is that you can't change the keybinds for now, so moving with WASD may be tricky if you have a different keyboard layout, and this might make the game not as accessible as it could be. Now I'd like to talk a bit more about the tools and the weapons, and then I'll talk about the farming, because after all, it is a farming game, so we're gonna be getting to that pretty soon. You have three toolbars basically in this game, one with all of your tools, so this one is fixed, it doesn't change, and it includes all of your tools at all time. Tools won't take space in your inventory, they're just in this dedicated toolbar and you can easily switch between tools and I love it. It's simple, it's convenient, it's perfect. Then there's a customizable toolbar with six slots in which you can put whatever you'd like, such as seeds and consumable items. And lastly, if you press tab, you're gonna be switching between these two toolbars to your fighting toolbar. So your character will take out their sword and you can fill the toolbar with potions, spells, and other things that you would use during combat. And this system ensures that your regular tools and items don't get in the way of your fight. In theory, it is a good idea. However, it can be a bit annoying because combat happens in the caves where you will need to use your pickaxe to break rocks in order to get ores and often to clear the path and progress deeper in the caves. It might not seem like much, but pressing tab after each battle, then 5 to equip the pickaxe, then E to break the rocks. Also, by the way, I really wish we could left click for actions, but as of now, everything is done with E or F depending on the action. So after you broke the rock, you press tab, you fight one or two monsters and do the same thing all over again. I think that a simple option letting us equip a tool while remaining in combat mode, or even easier if the game simply remembered what your last equipped tool was. So when you quit combat mode, instead of pressing tab and then 5 to select the pickaxe every single time, you would just press tab and your character would go back to using the pickaxe automatically. I think that would be a lot easier, but once again, that's why early access exists, and I'm sure this will be improved. It's just slightly annoying if you're playing the game right now. As for the combat itself, it's fine, you attacked with left click, so that's pretty much the only action done with the left click. You can also use spells, things work fine, I didn't encounter any major issues, but it's pretty much standard combat you would expect from a farming action RPG. It does not revolutionize anything, but I don't mind it. One thing to note, however, is that developers have put in their roadmap that they want to revamp the combat system and make it a bit more interesting. So I'm gonna be looking forward to that. The farming on the other hand, while also staying pretty close to the classic formula, you can see that it's already attempting to change things up a bit. So you start with a field that is very messy, so you'll have to use your axe, hammer, and hoe to clear things up and till the soil. You're then gonna plant your seeds one by one, and then you water them with your gourd. So in this game, you're gonna have a magical gourd. It has an infinite amount of water, so you don't have to refill it. So that's nice, and not only that, if you hold down E, you can summon a cloud that will rain on your crops. 
and you can then control the cloud for a few seconds before it disappears. This makes watering your crops a lot faster and of course it does consume quite a bit of mana so you'll most likely have to water some of the crops manually but I find this to be a fun mechanic. You can refill your mana by catching these mana orbs that appear pretty much everywhere but once again you'll have to unequip your tool in order to do that which is a bit annoying. As for your stamina which depletes every time you use a tool, you can replenish it by sleeping and every hour of sleep will give you a certain amount back and you always wake up at 7am in this game. So if you had an exhausting day, it's a good idea to sleep early to have a full bar of stamina when you wake up the next day. You can also decorate your house and certain items will have an effect on the amount of stamina you will recover every hour. And I have to say I really like the stamina system so far. It gives the player a good reason to keep an eye on what time they're going to bed and it's also an incentive to decorate your house. On top of being aesthetic, it's also functional and there are tons of different pieces of furniture you can decorate the interior and exterior of your farm with. Going back to the farming, you can also get your hands on some items called harvest signs that will let your crops grow instantly. So I got one or two of these items during the tutorial, I got a few after as well. I don't think it's a type of item you'll be using all the time, but it can be pretty useful. And harvesting your crops is just like you would expect from any farming game, you will just harvest them one by one. And sometimes if you're lucky, you can get a more valuable version of a crop. For example, a red cabbage instead of a green one, which will sell for more shards which is the name of the currency in this game. To sell your things, you'll have to go to the village and you can sell to any of the merchants outside. And by the way, every item in this game has a quality indicator. I think that's what it is. There's always a number followed by Q, like most crops seem to be between seven and nine Q and some items will also have another letter. I saw some C, G, S, L, sometimes there's nothing. And I'm a bit confused by that as I don't think the game really explains it. So I don't have any explanations for this. I think C might mean consumable and S might mean special, but I'm really not sure. So once again, I hope this is something the game will explain a bit more later. And other than selling your crops for shards, you can also use them for cooking. So I would say cooking is a pretty big part of this game. I don't know if you can have your own kitchen later on, but for now cooking happens at the inn where there are lots of different stations. So there's different cutting boards, there's a wok, a steamer, mixing bowls, and baskets with different ingredients. And each recipe requires different ingredients, but also different steps. So there are little pictograms you can follow. Basically, you just pick up the ingredients, go to the correct stations, and then press a button. It's really not hard, it's not complicated, but it is different from what we're used to. I find it fun for now, but I'm afraid it might become tedious after a while, especially if you want to cook a lot of dishes. This reminds me of a game called Moonglow Bay, which had a pretty similar cooking mechanic. It was fun, but got tedious after some time, so I'm gonna have to play more to have a better opinion on that. You can also do some part-time job by cooking some dishes for the inn, and that's a great way to make money early in game. I also never found myself wondering what to do in this game, by the way. Not only will the main quest keep you busy, but there are also tons of side quests that characters will give you, not only working in the kitchen, but Many other things, there's also a button board with new requests every day, which are a great way to make money and increase your friendships. And on top of that, you have a whole village and farm to rebuild. So you're gonna have to collect materials like stone, wood, bamboo, and more to rebuild new parts of your farm, the village, and the sect, which will unlock access to new areas, new features, and allow you to progress in the main story. For now, I just rebuilt the renovation division, which is the building where I can see all of the other things I need to rebuild. So I built a crafting station on my farm and with that crafting station I made a warehouse which I placed on my field and that allows me to store items. I also upgraded my axe which allowed me to cut my way through a beautiful bamboo forest and so far I really like the progression that these buildings offer and it's just nice to see things improve little by little. That's one thing I always enjoy in farming games. Your character will also improve little by little through the leveling system called Breakthrough. I'm still in what's called the initial stage, but once I gather over 13,500 points in the different skills, such as planting, cooking, crafting, class, gathering, fishing, battle, and alchemy, then I'll get to pick three abilities to use for my Breakthrough. I think, because the game doesn't really explain the system, I also saw on the Steam discussions page that this feature was not fully implemented yet, so it might be a bit too early to talk about it, but it does look like an interesting system, and once I got it figured out, I will let you know. Another thing that's slightly confusing and not really explained is the calendar. 
The game has four seasons split into six periods of three days each. For example, in spring, there's beginning of spring initial, beginning of spring middle, beginning of spring end. Then there's rainwater initial, rainwater middle, rainwater end. And it goes on like this for awakening of insects, spring equinox, pure brightness, and lastly, grain rain. If you click on each day, you'll see a short description. For example, on a certain day, geese will return. On another day, maybe grass will sprout. Another day, eagle turns into a dove, or first rainbows, and things like that. But beside the fact that it was raining every day in the rainwater period, I couldn't really notice if the other periods had special things affecting the gameplay, or if it's mostly just like for roleplay and just setting the tone for the game. But I have to say I really like the direction that this is going, as most farming games don't follow the flow of the seasons in much details, and usually the first and last day of a season will be the exact same in most games, so I appreciate that they seem to be trying to change things up a little bit with all of these different phases. I just wish they were explained a little bit better. Also, it looks like this part was translated very roughly, and once again, it looks much cleaner in Chinese, because in English, the font size varies a lot, and with the heavy repetition of initial, middle, and end through all of these phases, it's just an overload of text and information, and it just looks a little bit messy. I think that simply writing it on two lines instead of one, or replacing initial, middle, and end with tiny one, two, and three icons in the corner to indicate which phase you're in, would make things a little bit cleaner, but at this point, I'm just nitpicking and I'm hopeful that they will put more efforts on localization for this kind of details a little bit later. The game mechanic itself is very interesting and I'm just looking forward to knowing more about it and understanding it a little bit better. And I think that's my general conclusion so far for Immortal Life. A lot of interesting mechanics, but they're not all clearly explained. Things are a bit rough around the edges, especially in English. The game looks beautiful and it is genuinely fun, but the controls are clunky and don't feel natural. However, the good thing is all of these are things that can be fixed while the game is still in early access. The core mechanics that are in place are good, it's just a matter of tweaking a few things to make them a bit more seamless. Moreover, in my few hours of playing so far, I'm actually at the end of spring and I have not encountered any bug yet which is pleasantly surprising for a game in early access. So should you play Immortal Life? I think if you can read Chinese, you will have a much easier time enjoying the game in its original language. And also on the Steam discussions page, there's a lot of information in Chinese, there's a lot going on in there. So you're gonna have an easier time, I think. But if like me, you cannot read Chinese, I think you will still enjoy it, but just be ready for a few moments of confusion, especially at first. And if you're looking for specific information, there's really not that much information out there for this game yet. So that might be a bit tricky. But this game is introducing some refreshing mechanics that derive a bit from the standard. But also players used to farming sims will still feel at home. And as for me, I really enjoy the Chinese setting. We don't see it a lot in this genre. And just to experience it, I think the game is worth a try. If you're looking for a more polished experience, I would recommend maybe waiting for a bit. The good thing is that the devs seem to be listening closely to the player's feedback and are already planning a lot of improvements. But if you're like me and you don't mind playing a flawed game and enjoy seeing how it evolves, then I think you'll have a good time. That's pretty much it guys, these are my thoughts so far on Immortal Life. Let me know if you've played this game, if you're planning to play it, if you like it or not. Let me know all of this in the comments and also please leave a like and subscribe if you'd like to see more Immortal Life content like this and I'm gonna see you all in the next video.